In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you both uh, for your wonderful readings today. We're so blessed uh, to have fantastic readers. Two weeks ago was Martin Luther King Sunday, and we talked about his example of living love, of choosing love over hate, of the beloved community, and that following Jesus has practical application in our life, in our community, in our world. Last week, Paul gave us a shape of that love in community, and that shape is the body of Christ. And we explored questions like, who is part of the body of Christ? What happens when we aren't a full body I shared a story about what it looks like when we are a full body. This week, the animating force that moves this body into action is love. And everyone can do their part, just the little bit right in front of them. And we don't have to do it alone, and we know from Jeremiah today that we don't do it alone. And this is affirmed in our baptismal covenant. And I'll tell you what, I've been listening to a podcast lately called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. And um, it's about an evangelical megachurch in Seattle and the sort of narcissistic megalomaniac who, who built that whole sort of empire. And I'm... I'm always convicted at, at how valuable the Episcopal Church is, our long, ancient tradition, which can sometimes feel stuffy. It can sometimes feel like maybe not the most exciting thing all the time. But what we do here is, is sacred and sacramental. We believe in the power of the sacrament. And so... When we are baptized and when we renew our baptismal vows, we say, I will with God's help. And Jeremiah says, I'm just a boy. And God says, I will be there with you. Jeremiah says, how can I do this? I can't. You're you're calling on me to do something I really think I can't do. And God says, I knew you from before the womb and I will give you the words to say I got you I chose you because I love you and I know you that's what God is saying to us and when we look at our baptismal vows we say I will do this will you reject evil I will with God's help so I was thinking about the story the other day but what it looks like, this animating love, this love that moves our body of Christ in action and maybe surprises us. I was taking the trash out. I live in this apartment complex called Fillmore Gardens, South Arlington, shout out. And um, on my way back, I heard a voice. Hey, you, hey, you. And I kind of turned around and this woman was approaching me, this little petite older lady and I said me and she said yes you Uh, and I had no idea what was going to happen next so she approaches me and she says are you okay are you are you sick are you okay I said I I think I'm fine Um, and she said I want you to know that I've been praying for you and everything kind of changed and I said yeah really and she said yeah I was reading my Bible at my window and I was looking out of my window and I saw you one day this was a couple of months ago you were walking by and you seemed sick or maybe struggling 
And I said, well, I, I wasn't sick, but I'm sure I was struggling. <laughs> and she said, I began to pray for you that you wouldn't get COVID or that if you had it, that you, that you would be healed from it. I thought you had it. And I said, well, I didn't. And she said, then my prayers protected you. She said, I also, I saw, I see sometimes that you have a collar. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm an Episcopal priest. And then she said, Episcopal? You know, in the early 2000s, my brother and his wife, they live in Ethiopia where I'm from. This is what the woman is saying to me. She said, I found out that he and his wife were diagnosed with AIDS. And I was living here and I was so distraught, I didn't know what to do. So I, I just walked out of my house and I just kept walking and I kept turning and walking and my tears were streaming and I didn't know, I didn't even know why I was walking or where I was going to. And all of a sudden I ended up at a church and I went in and I said, I, I need a place to lay myself before the Lord, to throw myself down before the Lord and give him my pain and pray for my brother. This happened to be an Episcopal church. And the priest, one of the priests at the time, came to her and, and she says, this is my new friend, her name is Hannah. And Hannah said, I need a place to lay down before the Lord. And the priest takes her to the sanctuary and she prostrates herself before the altar. And she stays there for three or four hours, she said. And the priest kneeled next to her and laid her hands on her that entire time. Hannah, in relaying the story, her eyes got misty and she said, she never took her hand off of me. So there's a couple of images when we think about being the body of Christ that I want us to sit with. And one is that Hannah is sitting there reading her Bible right at the windowsill and looking out the window. Imagine that, reading our Bible out the window. This is how we ex expand our body. We take our love here and we shove it. We let it pass through the window out into the community, this outward prayer. And she ends up praying for a stranger, just like the priest prayed for her. In this, the other, the other image is of the priest, and it could be anybody, kneeling with her hand on Hannah as she's weeping for her family. This kind of radical expansion of love is actually hazardous. Jesus comes back to Nazareth. Everybody's excited. He's the anointed one. He's from, th from that place, from those people. And he says his message and his miracles are for more people than just them. And in fact, the way that he tells the story, he's prioritizing the other outside of Israel. And now in this moment, outside of Nazareth. And they're upset. They go from glorifying Jesus. Woo, yes, like, man, oh my gosh, he's from here and he is one of ours and he's the Messiah to, oh, well, we don't like what that message you just gave is. Let's run him up and throw him off a cliff. And if you notice, Jesus passes through them. They just can't quite do it. Jesus passes through. Love passes through hate. Passes through borders. Passes through fears. Through our own self-imposed limitations, love passes through. So Hannah took a risk. Hannah, my friend, she took a risk praying for somebody, especially somebody like me. I'm 
straight white guy in America. I'm part of the institution. You see my collar to an immigrant. How could she know whether I was even an advocate for her, even a possible friend? I could have been a hostile neighbor. But she prayed anyway. And when she had the chance, she checked in on me. For the priest at St. George's, this is the St. George's Episcopal Church, somebody from outside of their place and their tradition, a stranger appears. And when this happens, often you're assuming that they're, they're going to want some money or some kind of help. And all she wanted to, was to fall before the Lord. And I know that that priest had things to do that day, a routine, expectations to be, net, to be met. I know, I know she had a full plate. I know it. And she sets all of that aside to simply stay and lay her hands on this suffering woman for hours. And Jeremiah and his own self-imposed limitations all come from fear about how I can do this and God says, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. I've been with you this whole time. And I will help you with the words you need to say. But you do need to show up. It just doesn't take that much. All Hannah did was read the Bible looking out her window and to pray for a stranger. And all the priest did for her, was to show up and abide by a woman in pain. And these are things that we can do. Every one of us can do those two things. So there's, there's one last thing about this story, which is, that I asked Hannah where she lived, because she clearly lived in my neighborhood. She was watching me walk past her window. And she said, I live in that apartment right there. And I said, on the first floor? She said, yeah. I said, on the right or on the left? She said, on the left. And I said, well, Hannah, that's interesting, because I live over in this apartment on the first floor on the right. And it turns out that we share a wall. The wall of my bedroom is also the wall of her bedroom. And Jesus passes through it. Read your Bible looking out the window this week. That's all you have to do. God will do the rest. Amen.